Welcome to another episode of Solid Ground. Since everyone is snowed in today thanks to Winterstorm Jonas and cannot go anywhere, I thought I would bring up a topic today that would get everyone thinking. Jesus Christ is probably the most popular name or term used by people in the world today. His name is so popular that even people who are not Christians and people who do not believe in him will use his name as a swear word or maybe as a term in expressing themselves better in a sentence. What do I mean by this? What do you mean? For example, if your car is stuck in traffic, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, what is going on with this traffic? Or maybe, you know, you walked out of your house today and your car is buried under a pile of snow, you'd be like, Jesus, how am I going to get my car out? Or maybe in an office or social setting, when somebody does something wrong or silly, you know, you'd be like, Jesus Christ, you are so stupid. You see, it does not carry the same meaning the way Christians use it. When people use it in that way, it's more like swearing or, you know, a form of self-expression. You don't hear people saying, Oh, Buddha! Oh, Muhammad! Oh, Krishna! Oh, signs! Oh, Einstein! Instead, people say, Oh, Jesus Christ! Whether we believe in his teachings or his existence, the fact is, whenever Jesus is used, it causes a reaction. Whether that reaction is good or bad is another topic for discussion. But the fact is, his name has been constantly used over the last 2,000 years, and this trend is not going to die out anytime soon. Since people keep talking about him, and his name is used all the time, for the sake of everyone, the topic for today is, will the real Jesus please stand up? Who is Jesus? Who is he? The Jews will consider Jesus a miracle performing heretic. To the Christians, he is God. To the Muslims, he is a prophet. To atheists like Richard Carrier, he never existed. To Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, he will say that Jesus lived in India for 12 years and returned to Jerusalem in a saffron robe. Deepak Chopra says that Jesus was nothing more than a holy man and a guru type personality that attained Nirvana. And the average Joe on the street would probably say Jesus is a good man. With a plethora of views about who Jesus is, how do we know who is most accurately representing him? That is actually not rocket science, but actually a simple task if you spend some time thinking about it logically. And the key word here is logically. If I wanted to find out something about a person, the most sensible thing would be to speak to that person directly. If that opportunity does not present itself, the next best option is to speak to someone who knew that person directly or personally. In this case, their family or their closest friends because they will be able to give you an accurate picture of who that person is and how he lived his life. Let me give you an example. My dad, Dennis Meyer, passed away from a heart attack nine years ago. Now, if someone who never knew him and wanted to find out what he was like, it would make sense for them to go to his immediate family members such as myself, my brother or my mom, his siblings or even his closest friends to find out more about him. Now, naturally, you would trust what we are saying because we are all first-hand eyewitnesses to his life. For some reason, if I wanted to write a book or an autobiography about the life of Dennis Meyer, even though it's been 10 years since he passed away, you will still trust what was being said in the book because the ones who are contributing to the book are basically his immediate family members, his siblings and his closest friends, all who are still alive and were eyewitnesses to the life which he lived. Now, if someone else decides to write an autobiography about Dennis Meyer 600 to 1000 years later, and this person lived in a different location and never witnessed his life firsthand, which account will you trust more? Which account will give a more accurate reflection of my dad? Is it the account that was written within 10 years by eyewitnesses, or the account that was written 600 to 1000 years later? Reason should tell you that you will pick the former, because it was written closest to the time of his life. This is the same type of logical reasoning we need to apply if we want to know who the real Jesus is. While the Quran may talk about Jesus, it was only written 600 years later after his death. Even the idea that Jesus was a spiritual guru that lived in India for 12 years, that book was written by a Russian journalist, Nicholas Norovich, in 1894, 1900 years later. The earliest biographical accounts about Jesus comes from the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John found in the New Testament. These Gospels were written within 50 years by people who witnessed his life. Are you trying to tell me that I should refer to sources that came 600 to 1000 years later and completely ignore the sources written by eyewitnesses closest to the time of his life? That doesn't make any sense. Even Paul, who wrote 13 books of the New Testament, came much earlier than the Gospels, within 20 to 30 years. Many scholars will agree that the earliest creed by Christians found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 8, that talks about the death and resurrection of Jesus, was written within months to within three years after the death of Jesus. Just by looking at the earliest sources, we can filter out the claims of who Jesus is. By looking at the earliest source materials, we can tell that Jesus definitely existed. He wasn't a spiritual guru that wore a saffron robe. He wasn't a prophet and he wasn't just a good man. 
Hence, by process of elimination, we are left with the Jewish and Christian views of who Jesus is. In the Gospels, we see Jesus referring to himself as the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7, coming on the clouds of heaven to be the final judge. In John chapter 8 verse 58, we see Jesus referring to himself as the Ego Ami, the I Am before Abraham. In John chapter 20 verse 28, we see Thomas falling down on his knees saying to Jesus, Hokirios mu hoteos mu, meaning my Lord, my God. We also know that the reason why the Jews crucified Jesus was because Jesus claimed to be the Son of God in John chapter 19 verse 7 and towards the end of Mark chapter 14. This according to the Jews was blasphemy. Hence, by looking at the evidence I just provided, we can reasonably conclude with confidence that the accurate representation of Jesus is that of the Christian worldview, that Jesus is God. If Jesus is God, then this God that created the universe, this God that created you and me, has a desire to know us. He is relational and He can be known personally. God is not just some abstract idea, nor is He an impersonal God that is too distant, too far away to be known. This also means that this God is compassionate because He understands how we feel whenever we go through pain and suffering. Because He Himself came down to earth and experienced it for Himself and paid the ultimate price through the crucifixion. He did not just sit up there in His mighty throne and watch from above while we suffer down below. Because Jesus endured pain and also conquered through the pain, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. One of my friends recently asked me, why do I make such videos? And you know it got me thinking. The reason why I do this is so that I can share the good news with people, to let people know there's hope out there. Because Jesus died for everyone to redeem us, and because He rose from the dead three days later, there is hope beyond the grave. There is hope that can be found in Jesus. Jesus offers you hope in the most hopeless of situations that cannot be found in this world, and I feel that is something worth sharing. Think about it, if someone today died and rose from the dead three days later, this incident would have gone viral, and it would be all over Facebook and YouTube. If Facebook and YouTube existed 2,000 years ago, I guarantee you that these videos about the resurrection of Jesus would have gone viral because it is newsworthy. Because Jesus rose from the dead, it is something worth sharing and telling people. Because Jesus rose from the dead, then this changes the playing field. And perhaps it's worth your time to investigate and find out the truth for yourself. Jesus, known as Nabi Isa to my Muslim friends, is mentioned by name 29 times in the Quran. And Muhammad is mentioned by name 4 times in the Quran. I get that the Quran talks about Jesus, but I think it's fair to say if we want to really know who Nabi Isa or Jesus really is, it's best to look at the earlier sources that were written by eyewitnesses and these sources can be found in the Gospels in the New Testament. If we don't refer to these sources, then we cannot know anything about who Jesus really is. And to my other friends who have other worldviews, I encourage you to read the Gospels and investigate the resurrection of Jesus because without the resurrection, Christianity is false. When you come to know who Jesus really is, you come to know the truth and the truth will set you free. I hope you guys enjoyed the video for this week and learned a thing or two. If you found this video useful, like it and comment about it, or even share it with your friends. And always remember this, follow the evidence wherever it leads. See ya!